The postseason is underway, and we already have upset number one. This is the DraftKings postgame show, season number two of the Ball and Play Tournament. That's Mel. I am Chris. Well, the pregame show, all three of your announcers picked Forgotten Rotten. And what happened? <laughs> Wugas came in here and said, y'all are morons. Uh-huh. They took it to one of the favorites here in the postseason tournament. How did they get it done? Well, they they just put it together. As far as the batting went, that was brilliant, especially when you saw Jimmy Norp, because we've been wondering when he was going to come through, and he came through today. But all across, what was incredible was that they lost a player when Luke uh, sort of pulled his quad, and they still managed to defend. And that is, it just blows my mind. Uh, they had everything against them. They put Forgotten Rotten under pressure, and they have not been under that kind of pressure in this whole tournament. No question, Luke O'Brien, one of the big stories. He continued to play and actually swing it well as a striker, and he is the star of the game. He is standing by no. with Mom <laughs> We got Mama with Kelsey. in here now. Yeah, bring how, her in here. How do we, was it concerning to see your son's Have injury there? Have her turn there? around, though, no, Kelsey. No. Have her turn around. This way. We Have see her turn around. There we go. There's Mama. He's good. He's all good. He's tough. Come on. Rub it out. Over here now, call me a pussy, basically. Listen. Whoa. Well, hey, don't say that in front of your mother. Today you're a winner. While we have you here, we have a rumor that we need to settle, okay? We've been told that you are cheering for Jimmy in this tournament because Luke does not call you enough. Is that correct? He doesn't call me enough, but he came out to dinner with us last night and slept over, so he kind of making his way back. So is Jimmy still in the lead? Jimmy calls me. Okay. Look what color ah. shirt it is, Kelsey. Look, look, look. <laughs> What are we charging for this family therapy session? What are we doing here? Okay, well, Luke, for you, first of all, just describe to us what you're actually, like, legitimately feeling right now and if you think you're going to be able to keep playing. I hope I can keep playing. It's going to be hard to get me to not play. Um, I, like, like, explosion in my quad is what I felt. Like, I almost felt like I heard it. Big pop, and then I tried to, like, keep going for a little bit. But, yeah, I don't know. I screwed it up. Medic said ice it. That was the best solution we have so far. But uh, it seems like it helped me hitting. Yeah. No hips. The hips were the problem the whole time. So. Yeah. You cannot, do not move the hips. Yeah. Now, we were talking to Jimmy Norton before the game. You guys didn't win a game in the regular season, but he said that he really felt you guys were starting to click. What clicked for you guys this game, being able to take down an undefeated team in the regular season? Um, hitting. I feel like finally we like locked in and put up a good number. We we lasted long enough in the overs. I feel like the first two games, we always had one early wicket that kind of killed the momentum. Like we had big innings, but we were never able to put long like big momentum swings and we never really killed ourselves with a with a pop-up, which is good. I feel like Sanjay is so almost like meek that not, not enough people in the warehouse are talking about him, but how much of a weapon has he been for you guys? He's sneaky. He's sneaky, sneaky, reliable. I want to put him up there with one of the best bowlers in the tournament. I think he's got three nasty pitches, four net balls already. I don't know if anyone's done that. Um, yeah, he's the best. He's our. We can keep him. I like keeping him under the radar. Um, people don't know about it until they play us. Hey, well, go ice your quad and go call your mom. I will. I will. Thanks, Gal. Well, we didn't think that we'd be checking in on Forgotten Rotten in the loser's locker room, if you will. Uh, Trevor Plouffe, I could see you shaking your head already. Where did it go wrong today? I think you got to give credit to the Woogas. They did a nice job of hitting a lot of boundaries today, a lot of sixes out of them. And then we just had uh, a little lull in offense, and I'm so disappointed. Uh, we think we got the best team here, and now we're just going to have to watch these other earmuffs motherfuckers go out there and play when we should be on the field. All right, Woogas, congratulations. Winless in the regular season. You came out swinging the sticks today. Luke, first of all, how you feeling? Are, are you okay? Uh Yes and no. Uh, my leg's not okay, but I'm feeling really good. Um, I'll be able to play tomorrow, but I just won't be able to move as much. Calvin, you told me yesterday that you just didn't want to lose after winning both games through the season. But what about their bowling? Because we actually saw our first maiden bowl in the whole tournament. I know. I literally just said I think that's the first maiden in bowl and play history because we didn't have one last year either. And it's like, it's true as Bob, you go out there, you're looking unbelievable, you win two, and then the team that's been struggling comes and plays their, like, World Cup final against us. Yep. So that's highly frustrating. And I think we just, I think it's also on us, we took too long to adjust to, to Jimmy's throwing. I think once we adjusted, we saw we could score second innings, but that was on us for taking too long to, uh, to work out what to do there. That's the warehouse. Jimmy, you are unbelievable today. First maiden 
bold in the entire tournament. And also, yeah, yeah, that deserves a massive clap. And also your batting. Now, we rode on the back of the bus home yesterday, and you said to me, I have a feeling that a team who's lost all the way through is going to actually win the tournament this time. Now, how much of that thought process did you take in today? <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely still believe that. I told Kelsey in our pregame interview, like, I feel like this team here might have the most potential. We just haven't really put it all together yet, and today I think we finally did that. Uh, I'm just super happy and proud of this team. Luke, like, he's the man. I know I'm the quote-unquote captain of this team, but he's really our leader. And like I told him, I would rather lose this tournament with him still playing then win it without him, you know. So he's he's like our guy. He's that our sounds like a captain to me, doesn't it? That's a good <laughs> that's a good line right there. It got me pumped up. Penick, I know it's disappointing. You spent so much time and energy in putting this team together, going through the mathematical equations on positioning, batting order, when to bowl, et cetera, et cetera, as the chief strategy officer. I'm curious just how much pressure is there when you see them continue to dial up fours and sixes and you're like, man, we gotta chase a hell of a lot of runs. No, I mean, I don't know, Chris. I mean, we, even in that final inning when we were up there, I felt like, you know, there was a good shot. You know, we even made it close to the end. There were three balls left, and, you know, we just needed a couple wides for Trev to, you know, get some sixes. So it, it, was, it came down to that first that first inning for us, but uh, it sucks. It sucks. I mean, this is this is the warehouse. I mean, this is, this is the quintessential warehouse where you have a team that's not hitting. Luke O'Brien, who's a really, really good hitter, and he has one six coming into this game, and... Now they all start hitting at the right time. I mean, this is the you know this is what the warehouse is all about. Um, so credit to the Woogas for really doing a you know they had a great game. Well, we wouldn't be able to be here in this warehouse in this great tournament and bring you some great press conferences if it weren't for our friends and our sponsors over at DraftKings. DraftKings Sportsbook is here to help you get closer to the action. Wondering what the DraftKings Sportsbook app offers? Well, check out DraftKings Parlays, Same Game Parlays, and SGPXs. Combine multiple bets together from the same game for a shot at even a bigger payout. And if sports betting is still not available in your state, you don't got to worry because you can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have the shot to win some cash prizes. So get some skin in the game and download the DraftKings app right now. And don't forget to use our promo code WAREHOUSE. That's promo code WAREHOUSE only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Let's go. Let's go. Go. Puke noise on three. One, two, three. Uh. Big burp there. It was that Yoo-Hoo chocolate milk in a can. Stuff is unbelievable. This guy's battling, man. I love Luke. He's a great teammate. He's a great dude. Dan's gonna have a moment now. Rourke sees true poop really well. <laughs> I almost threw that and then I remembered. All right, come on, come on, let's go, come on, come on, let's go. Fucking play and flip cup. Looks all right. Looks great. You look like a Reese's Peter Pan. Yeah, something like that. I kind of looked like the guy from Curious George, I said, with the hat, but Reese's Peter Pan works as well. Oh, hi, Kelsey. <laughs> well, the pressure got put on Forgotten Rotten. They are officially eliminated. I don't know how many people would have chosen the Woogas to advance after the quarterfinals. They went 0-2 in the regular season with Forgotten Rotten going 2-0, but the Forgotten Rotten wasn't able to put up enough runs in that inning, and the bats of Jimmy Norp and, of course, Luke O'Brien, the story of the game, came alive as Wooga advances to the semifinals. So that's game one here of the postseason from the warehouse, but we got the second game of the playoffs coming your way now. Now, it is the defending champs in hook line sinkers taking on We Got Ice. We Got Ice 0-2 in the regular season. Are they going to be able to upset one of the best teams in this tournament? For more on this game, let's get you up to the booth with Chris Rose and Mel. It's the quarterfinals, baby. That's right. We are back in the warehouse, Jersey City, New Jersey. It is a DraftKings pregame show. Game number 10, it's our second of four quarterfinal matchups. 1-2-0 team, 1-0-2 team. Stop me if you've heard this before, but this time it involves the defending champion hook line sinkers taking on We Got Ice. And if you talk to We Got Ice, they're like, hey, Wugas just showed us the blueprint. We're going to be just fine here. 
easier to easier said than done because they've still got to put it together and they haven't done it all season. And again, I, this is this deja vu all over again, Chris, because it's really hard to go past hook line sinkers. It, they've been another team that has been solid all around all the way through. But playoffs are a funny thing, huh? Pressure cricket. Yeah, and with We Got Ice, sure, they might say, well, listen, we just saw it happen on this very cement. We can pull it off as well. They've got to produce when they're up at the plate, and that's what Wugas did in order to knock off Forgotten Rotten. They put up a big number. They put up another big number their second time up. I don't know if We Got Ice has got that in them. Well, they haven't shown as many signs as perhaps the Wugas did uh, in the regular season, but... I, Look, they've learned a lot in their first two games. Mm -hmm. It's just, have they learned enough? Time to find out. Kelsey Winger, check it in with both teams. In the first game of the playoffs, we saw an upset that I don't think anybody was expecting to see. An 0-2 team taking down a 2-0 team. You guys are unscathed so far. How do you plan to defend your title against a team that seems like they <clears throat> should be able to click, but they haven't clicked and we got ice? Yeah, look, they haven't gotten a win yet, uh, but they're a team that has not looked like a, a pleasant team to play against this whole way. But uh, I think if we do everything we do, um, just play play our game, do what we do best, I think we'll, we'll end up where we need to be. Um, and that, that would ideally be in the winning side of things. Mm -hmm. Your overall takeaways on being here in the postseason for the very first time in the warehouse? I, it's incredible. I've dreamt of this as a little boy growing up yeah. and to go oh into the last couple of days and to still make it and we're peaking at the right time if I've learned anything from World cricket world cups you lose the first two games yeah. and you go all the way and we get the trophy on Sunday are you the best cricket player in the warehouse <laughs> I don't know well I'm not sure about the best but I think I've adopted to the conditions pretty good and uh, I think the smarter we have become like we know the rules and this hitting back has really helped my game like I have opened more possibilities of scoring run so I think um, being smart in the warehouse is help, helps you. I've said this the whole tournament hasn't come to fruition yet but our team has just this unperversionist confidence just Dan, Zoe and Mo all of them are just like hey it's gonna click it's gonna click and I'm just kind of feeding off that energy and I think it's we're going to put all the pieces together. Do you guys feel the pressure to defend your title, or have you guys not really felt pressure this whole tournament? Uh, well, in a way, we felt pressure the whole time. I think everybody would would like to see us finally lose a game. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, in, in another sense, we haven't felt any added pressure. Every game we've played this tournament and going back to last tournament has been pretty high stakes the whole time, pretty tight. Like, we've been very accustomed to close games uh, and, and eking out wins when, uh, regardless of the circumstances. We haven't seen the true Jack Doyle on right. the mound. Uh, what needs to click for you to become the, the former plastic surgeon, Cy Young, all of the accolades in the warehouse? Yeah, you know, I'm not 100% sure our winning formula needs that, but if I do see it fit, I'll break it out and I'll throw some balls behind the back and we'll get crazy. I think it's all about having one thing, one cool thing happen to you opens up a whole new life. Bob check here, K-Mac from We Got Ice. We got hook line sinkers, Jolly Olive. What we got here, Holly? I mean, we got a great matchup, defensive master class on the other side, but we're gonna mash and we're gonna pitch like the best of them. All right, let's see what some We Got Ice fellas gotta say. We got We Got Ice and we got hook line sinkers. Jack Doyle, what we got on the vibe check? We just, we just heard from Jolly Olive saying it's gonna be a defensive master class. What do you think? Offensive masterclass. As we take a look at the SeatGeek playoff bracket, the winner of this game will square off against Wugas in the semifinals. Your other two matchups, by the way, Del Caribe, McFlurry Power, Lovias squaring off against Team Baggage. All right, it is prediction time, Kelsey Winger. So what's interesting about this matchup in particular, we got ice went 0-2 in the regular season, but they are 6-0 and in warehouse games versus hook line sinkers. Mm. But hook line sinkers is 6-0 and in all ball and play games. I think the experience of hook line sinkers as the defending champs is going to prove to be too much for a we got ice team who hasn't been able to piece it together yet this tournament. So for me, I will be taking the 6-0 and in ball and play and the defending champs and hook line sinkers you're such a math nerd Kels <laughs> I had to talk slow through the numbers you know <laughs> well you know what I'm I'm going against the grain because all three of us 
Well, we were all for Forgotten Rotten the last time around. So I'm going for the upset. I'm backing okay. in. I'm backing in. We got ice to bring home the chocolates today. So that, to bring home what? Chocolates. Is that a saying in cricket or did you just make that up it's in your world? It's a saying and everybody knows that saying. Right? Oh. Bring, bring hey, listen, home the chocolates. Hey, listen, if there is somebody in this building who should know about chocolates, <laughs> it's Tummy Tuck Rose, okay? Um, so that means that I have to break the tie and neither team wants me to pick them because I'm so bad at this stuff. <laughs> All right, hook line, let's go. Keep the march going. You, you're playing the role of the heel. Great. I mean, nobody likes you in this warehouse. They, they all want to see you out, which is exactly why you will march on into the semifinals. But you'll have to tune in and see for yourself. For Kelsey, for Mel, for our amazing John Boy Media production team, I am Chris. Thanks for watching the pregame show presented to you by DraftKings.